as so we're on our way to the Fremont Farmers Market in the Bay Area, California. We're gonna surprise Mike and Nikki. And a little backstory, if you remember from our first episode, Mike and Nikki's Honey Company is where I learned beekeeping for the first time before moving to Bulgaria. And we'll be asking them about how beekeeping is done here in the California Bay Area versus what you've been seeing in Bulgaria. Okay, so we arrived. And okay. we also brought some Bulgarian honey with us. We brought honeydew, linden, and acacia. And we'll see what kind of varietals Mike and Nikki have here. Oh yeah, you know, Mike was actually talking about acacia this morning because I was, the yellow acacia trees are starting so to bloom. This, funny, oh, we didn't get any acacia last year. This yes. is actually two years old. Okay. Um, and it doesn't crystallize. Nice. For a long time. Right. After two years. Then uh, we have the uh, East Europe. Oh, Lincoln, yes. Oh, yeah. oh my God. So I'm back here with the last farmer in Campbell, Nikki who actually taught me beekeeping from episode one if you've been following us on YouTube. We are actually at the last farm in Campbell. And uh, today we're meeting with Nikki to try, well, she's gonna try for the first time some of our Bulgarian varietals. We brought acacia honey, linden honey, and honeydew honey. So let's see what she thinks. All right, this one, we're gonna start with the light and then go to the dark because it works with your palate better. So this one, I understand it's been in the jar a while and it's not crystallizing, which is a really good attribute for it. Um, honey wants to crystallize. Go find a, a tomb and you'll know that it crystallizes. But Americans like it liquid. Americans like it liquid. Mm -hmm. It has great floral notes in that um, it's mid palate. It has a back sweet tongue taste. And it's uh, probably gonna do really well with salty. Mm, yes, it does actually. Yeah, so you want to find out what honey pairs with. It's like wine and cheese. The right cheese makes the wine taste fabulous. These are really fancy terms too. I need to study up on my honey yes. tasting vocabulary. Let's see what we got here next. This is the linden. Linden. Yep. It's crystallized. Side note, you want to uncrystallize your honey, put it in your car, roll up the windows, park it in the sun, come <laughs> back tomorrow. <laughs> It's amazing when you taste your, develop your honey palate, how it tastes so different. Because mm -hmm. this one has higher, but hasn't gotten into the front nasal like an orange blossom. Mm. It has a more robust full tongue taste to it. None of the back tongue taste. Mm. And um, this one's gonna go well with a black tea. Mm. And um, it's gonna go really well on a very floral orange because it'll be floral on top of floral because one of my favorite things is to find good honeys on ruby red grapefruits. One of ah. my favorites! Mm. Really? Yes. Oh, the Campbell Farm here on ruby red grapefruit is just shove it in your face. <laughs> now we're getting into the darker. You go from light to dark to help your palate. Uh, they just tried, tried our buckwheat. Oh, I can smell it from here. It's like black. Oh, it's yeah. pungent. Very, very strong aroma which is very dark and very hoppy. Um, yeah, this is it was delicious. Quite different. Yeah. Very different. Now dark doesn't always equate to deeper tastes, but it usually does. You can never say always. This one has a deeper taste. It goes more to the bottom of your mouth um, and it gets the back of your palate on a higher sense. And um, it has that mellowness to it, this deep, mellow taste to it. So that when you find out with honey, you get to go on a honey tasting adventure. You're going to learn your palate. Uh, like cilantro, some people it tastes like soap, but other people think it's fabulous. <laughs> we felt that way about the eucalyptus. Yes, yeah. I did not like cilantro till I was 35 and my palate changed. Ah. And then I also liked olives and that it, it's, it's a, there's a chemical and a DNA interaction with you. So go on your journey, try a couple of different things, but then try it with something. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we will try it on different cheeses and then you can try it on the same thing, the same cheese or an egg and see how it compa they compare to each other so you find out yours. An egg. You find yours. Yeah, we will do in our honey testing um, all different cheeses and olives and fruits and then we'll put four different kinds on the same kind of egg. Mm. So that they're seeing how it plays against a protein and how yeah. one item can change with four different flavors of honey. Interesting. So we grow and learn together, know that we're gonna have collabs. In this world of Zoom, we will be Zooming. Exactly. So there'll be something, we'll bond. We're gonna be here in this farm. They're all out at beekeeping on the uh, almonds. Where are the bees? Oh, all the bees are at almonds. We made them get a job. Somebody's gotta earn money during <laughs> a pandemic. Yeah, no, we took them all out to almonds because 85% of all commercial bees in America come to California in February and March. It's Whoa. the single largest pollination event in the world. We have 1.6 million acres of almonds and they all come in and this is what builds the bee industry that supports the rest of the pollination. Wow. As they, there's these giant circuits where these bees are just on trucks, moving, 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 because they can do sunflowers, apples, blueberries, to do peppers in Florida in the summer. There's a whole cycle that happens. So people seeing bees on a farm, it's kind of a misnomer. We're an old school kind of thing. So our bees don't travel as much as others. And maybe, and we have commercial bees that do that, but not my farm bees. So they'll all be coming back in a couple of weeks. They had to get a job. You know, everyone's got to get a summer job. It's all about being local. We'll have Bulgarian honey in time, but it's also about supporting your local economy. So yep. find your local beekeeper who's got to hide in his backyard. You want to buy it. You also want to buy ours because there's so <laughs> many different kinds of there honey. There are. And know that when it's expensive, it's because it takes money to do this. So Thanks, I'm Nikki baby. with the Mike and Nikki Honey Company. And this is Jen with Bulgarian Honey Company. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you get the notifications. Also follow us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. And we'll see you next time. And always remember to be yourself. As